and the the the, the local French peasant said these. These Templars, they've gone native when they were on the Crusades. They're kissing the idol of Baphomet. And uh, that's that. That's what that is. It's the idol of Baphomet, or in fact, the icon of Mahomet. That's Jesus Christ, as you can see if you look at it. It's a wooden. Are, are you wooden all listening head. to this? For those people who are confused, really confused now, explain what you mean by Baphomet or Mahomet being Jesus Christ. So this is Mahomet again, referring in this case, one of the three, one of the three instances, or one of the three Mahomedim, if you like. It refers to the temple, temple of God, the, the appearance of it. This is how uh, this word came into uh, proto-Islam. Now, proto-Islam is really uh, what Gnostic Christ kind of Christianity is very important. It's kind of a mixture of Gnostic Christianity and Judaism. But Gnostic Christianity um, is very important in proto-Islam. This is where the words Isa comes from, where the word Yahya comes from for Jesus and John. And uh, this point here... Um, referring to the, the, the Mahamadim as the groom, bridegroom, of course, in Christianity, the bridegroom is Jesus Christ. There is actually a reference to that. Uh, I've got the reference. I put it down here. Matthew 9, 15 and Mark 2, 19 to 20 are the two cases where Jesus is referred to as the bridegroom. Uh, so that makes the Song of Solomon, Song of Songs, Mahamadim referred to Jesus Christ from the Gnostic Christian point of view. And uh, the Gnostic Christians have got a view of Jesus Christ, which is different from, from, from others in that uh, Jesus has three identities in Gnostic Christianity. Those three identities being the, uh, the luminous spirit, okay, the luminous spirit, um, the uh, crucified appearance, and the, um, I believe it's messianic uh, uh, role, the role of the Messiah. So, so Can I jump in? Yeah. This sounds very like Manichaeanism. And it Manichaeism, exactly is Manichaeism. Yes, and it came yes. from Mesopotamia as well. Exactly. And he was this is from not Mesopotamia. Christianity. Yeah. Another so this strike is... for Iraq, the Iraqi thesis. Absolutely. Just absolutely. Just, spot just explain that, Mel. Explain what you mean by that, because not everybody knows why you're bringing this up. Go ahead and explain. What is it, what, why is it you're bringing up this Manichaeism and Iraq into the equation? Well, um, in the third century, there was a, a guy who, who said he was the seal of the prophets. His name was Mani. He started a, 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 a Gnostic Christian sect. And uh, he was all about the book, the scriptures. Um, he also claimed to be visited by an, the angel Gabriel. Um, and uh, so his influence has been felt in Mesopotamia for centuries after that time. So for, it sounds to me like that um, a lot of the mythology around Muhammad was brought in from this Manichaean connection. But the, the interesting thing is he used that uh, tripartite description of Christ that you just mentioned. Yeah, he did indeed, exactly. Yeah. Uh, and so it's, it's, it's exactly... Um, the luminous, the luminous spirit, uh, the, Jesus the Messiah, the messenger, and the, I think the, the, the word is patibilis, Jesus the, the suffering appearance, the suffering one. So uh, that's quite interesting because, um, so this, this, this would be the Mahamadim, this would be the three, from the Christian point of view, of course, the, the Lord is, 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 is Jesus Christ. So, um, so the, Muhammad, the Muhammad, Mahamadim would be Jesus, but one of his, one of the Muhammads in Jesus, in the Gnostic Jesus, would be the suffering of Kirans, which is why we have reference in the Quran when it says that, so what if he died, was slain? Are you going to turn on your heels? And it's a refer reference to Muhammad. What if he dies or is or slain? Are you going to turn on your heels? At the same time, it says concerning the, the Rasul, the messenger, Messiah, they didn't crucify him, neither did they kill him, but it was his appearance, them, that they killed. They, it appeared to them so. Which is again saying, so they crucified his appearance, the, the, the patibilis, if you like, from the Manichaean point of view, they crucified the suffering's appearance, but they didn't crucify the Messiah because the Messiah is the Ahmed which Jesus gave to his disciples the night beforehand in the form of the, 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 the bread and wine. He says, this is my body here. I'm leaving. I'm giving it up for you. So that wasn't even on the cross. What was on the cross was the luminous spirit and the appearance, but the Messiah had already been given to the church, if you like, beforehand. So he didn't, he wasn't, the Messiah continues the work from the Gnostic point of view. This is obviously not not Christianity as we know it, but from the Gnostic point of view, the, the, the body of Christ, the church, continues the work of the Messiah until they're reunited again uh, at the end of time. So, Joe, what you're doing, and it's fascinating because I see what, what both you and Mel have, have found. Here you have, even in chapter 4, verse 157, which you're quoting right now on this reference, it, this is also, this is another uh, suggestion, this is another uh, side potion, I'd say, of this influence, this Gnostic influence on the Quran as well. And that's why yeah. this Manichaean or this Manichaean background, this Gnostic background, which fascinating, as Mel's pointing out, these Gnostic, these Manichaeans are way up north. They're way up in places yeah. like Kufa and in Baghdad, in that area, which yeah. is hundreds of miles away, lot, far too far away. But that's probably where the Quran was then 
introduced. We're saying this, Joe, yeah. because we're also well, finding materials. out that the Quran probably was put together up there as well. Well, definitely the Quranic materials. And as I mentioned in my previous video with Mal, that um, I believe the original Quran was written in a, what we call a Manichaean Pahlavi script. I, I believe it was actually written in Pahlavi script. And when it talks about it, those hadiths which talk about Uthman revising the Quran, I think because they knew that there were versions available in this Pahlavi script, and what, was, what happened was that they, they rewrote it in Arabic. The, the, the Nabataeans who got hold of this rewrote it again in their local Arabic script. And that was the Qurayshi dialect. But the, it was actually originally written in this Manichaean script and possibly <laughs> the Manichaean language as well. And that's possibly why there are also references to Salman Farsi being the first person to translate the Quran, because they couldn't escape the fact that there was already a Persian Quran. So that they were trying to explain away the fact that there was already a Persian Quran. Say, oh, yes, that was, tra that was translated by Salman Farsi. He, he, he translated it. And this would but explain actually, why Isa is in the text rather than yeah. Ashua or something else. Yeah, because it's the Gnostic Jesus. It's, the, it's Isa of Manichaeism, of Mandaism, of this, of this, this Gnostic Christians. We're using Isa and Yahya and Mahmud. Mahmudim would probably have been in the original Quranic, Quranic materials, but that's been edited out and lost. But it probably, because these references, it says, you know, the, it says who, who they find in their literature. This verse is not actually about uh, that Muhammad. This verse is about the, the, the light of the nation, the, 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 the nation of prophets, the, prof, the, the prophets to, to the nations. But there are other references. For example, I think, which one is it now? Uh, Mel, you, you, you're quite good with these. Which one, which reference is it where the, there are four references to Muhammad in the, in the Quran? Is it chapter, 50, chapter 40, 40 something? I'm no, the, four not the four references are um, actually, you want, you want the four references of Muhammad. One is the chapter, three, one. Yeah. chapter 3, what, verse 144, chapter 33, verse 40, chapter 47, verse 2, and That's chapter it. 48, Four. verse 29. You have a better memory than me. <laughs> yeah, so there, it's, it's a 40, let me just check and make sure. 47, 47. verse 2. Let me try that one. 47. I'll check and see 47 verse 2. 47 verse 2. I'll just check and see if that's the one I'm talking about. Uh, no. What was the other one? 48? 48 verse 29. 48 verse 29. Let's try that one. 48, 29. It's probably that one. Yeah, that's the one. So it's first 48, 29, which says they found their likeness in the Torah and the, and the, and the, um, uh, and the, and the Injil. That the, it, it's, it's probably making reference to this Muhammadim being Jesus Christ. But um, it was edited out of the final Quran. So, <laughs> so, so the reference of it being there is still there, but they've actually edited out, edited out the, 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 this triple nature. Although, you know, when you try to redact something and you edit it out, you can never be perfect in doing so, especially if you don't understand the concept. And so they left a reference to Jesus Christ as three still in the Quran when it says, oh, people of, of, of the book, don't go to extremes. Uh, the Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary, is Rasulullah, the Kalimatullah, wa So uh, he's, the, he's, he's the, the messenger of God, the word of God, and the spirit from him. And so this is the three, again, this Manichaean. There's the three right three, there. Yeah, yeah, right there. So they, they may have edited out the word Muhammadim from the Quran, and, and it's no longer there. So we've got this odd reference in chapter 48, verse 29, where it doesn't mention Muhammadim, but they still left in that three part there. And, and it's enough mm. to understand, ah, they're talking about Lord, the Song of Solomon. And, and although, you know, uh, it's been edited out. Muslims do know that, 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 this, that, that they, they've got to go to Song of Solomon chapter 5 verse 16 to find the reference to, uh, to Muhammad, but they've lost the point that that's not the prophet of Arabia or an Arabian prophet, that's Jesus Christ from the, Christ, from the Gnostic point, the Gnostic <laughs> Christian's point of view. Um, well, Joe, this, Joe, what so when the do Quran, you... Sorry, I was yeah. going to say, when the Quran says, do not say three, desist. Yeah. Is that because connected one? to that? Because chapter 4, 171. One? Because these three are one. The three are one. So, Don't say one. When do we say that the Trinity is three gods? For example, if you're Christians, do you say that the Trinity is three no, gods or is he one no, god? So, one god. So but if you were to say he's three gods, then that would be tritheism, which was actually outlawed in, in the, uh, what is it? The Sixth Ecumenical Council, which is actually really significant for this because it was in the year 680, after which Abdul Malik says, forget it, I'm going to create a new religion. So um, they take this, they take ideas from that. I think the Gnostics were kind of holding out until this Ecumenical Council to see if they would be included. And at the Ecumenical Council, they didn't include the Gnostics. And they said, right, forget it. They're kind of miffed about the thing. And so they, they, they create their own new religion. And he creates a new Arab religion to try and unite the Arabs. Maybe there was an element of not wanting to capit capitulate to the, to the Sixth Ecumenical Council. So they didn't. Anyway, the point is, after that council, it seems like something happens and Abdul Malik goes ahead and makes a new religion. Okay. Um, now, John